Because my video series and interactions with apologist William Lane Craig totaled almost two hours worth of content, I wanted to cover some of the best objections to the moral argument for God's existence in their own smaller, easier to digest videos. To sum things up quickly, here's the standard moral argument for God's existence. Premise 1. If God does not exist, objective moral values and duties do not exist. Premise 2. Objective moral values and duties exist. Conclusion. Therefore, God exists. This video is going to cover an objection about what are called moral brute facts, which is an idea I got from reading the work of atheist philosopher Eric Weilenberg. In order for the moral argument to work, an apologist must assume a theory of ethics known as modified divine command theory. In philosophy, this is what's called a meta-ethical theory. That is a theory that attempts to explain what makes something morally valuable and what constitutes our moral obligations. Modified divine command theory says that objective moral values are equivalent to God's nature and that objective moral duties, that is, what we ought to do, morally speaking, are made up of God's divine commands to us. As we'll see, modified divine command theory causes some problems for an apologist who tries to use the moral argument to say that an atheist can't have objective moral values or duties. I should point out that this objection is going to focus on moral values with another video that will focus on moral duties. This is because, like many meta-ethical theories, modified divine command theory rests on what are called brute facts. Brute facts are true facts that are not logically necessary, but have no further explanation. They just are what they are. This isn't to say that modified divine command theory is wrong because it relies on brute facts, but it is to point out that an atheist can appeal to a number of other meta-ethical theories that similarly rely on brute facts and get a system of moral values and duties that are just as objective as what theism can provide. This refutes the moral argument and shows that atheism does not entail moral relativism or nihilism. So, how does modified divine command theory rely on brute facts? Well, apologists say that for something like love to be considered morally good, it has to be part of God's nature. In fact, anything that is part of God's nature is considered good, and Christians conceive of God as a host of things, loving, kind, truthful, etc. And so all of those qualities count as good. The problem with this view is that the fact that God's nature has any one of those properties, or any specific property at all, is itself a brute fact. So the fact that Christians conceive of God being loving instead of, say, hateful, this has no explanation any more than Christians can explain why their God is a trinity instead of a duet or a quintuple. Those are all just brute facts about their God. In fact, any logical proof that could attempt to show this is going to need to make assumptions that would themselves be brute facts about the nature of being or love or whatever metaphysical topic they want to engage in to try to derive it. What's worse is that modified divine command theory actually cuts off even analytic appeals to say something like God's nature is loving is logically necessary in the same way that we would say all bachelors are unmarried would be analytically necessary. This is because if apologists assume that moral values existed apart from God, they could at least say that since God is defined as the greatest conceivable being, he must be necessarily be loving because loving is good. But this doesn't work, because modified divine command theory says that the only things that are good are the things that are in God's nature. So if we say that God was, say, hateful, mean, and deceitful, then those things would be good on this view. As such, there is no logically necessary reason to think that God's nature must be loving instead of hateful. It just happens to be that way, according to apologists' own view. Similarly, apologists can't appeal to their conception of God as a necessary being to explain why God's nature has one set of properties over another. A necessary being, or thing, is something that exists in the same way in every possible world. We typically consider things like mathematics or logical laws to be necessary. So when we say 2 plus 2 equals 4, there is no possible world where 2 plus 2 equals 5. When it comes to God, it just means that whatever set of properties God has, he has those properties in every possible world. So when you say it's logically necessary that God is loving because God is loving in every possible world, that's because you're assuming God is loving in the first place. 
There is no logical reason you can give to say why God is loving instead of hateful, because even if God is a necessary being, he could just as easily have a hateful nature in every possible world instead of a loving nature. Now that we've shown that theistic metaethics behind the moral argument relies on brute facts as an explanatory ultimate, we can move on to show why an atheist isn't forced into moral relativism or nihilism. An atheist is free to adopt other metaethical theories which rely on their own brute facts. There are theories such as Platonism, where the form of the good just exists. Modern defenders of this view would be philosophers like Eric Wielenberg in his book Value and Virtue in a Godless Universe. There are other ways to answer this question without resorting to Platonism, though I'll touch on them in another video in this series. In many meta-ethical theories, we're going to end up with some kind of brute fact as our explanatory ultimate or the ultimate stopping point for our moral theory. A theist or apologist may not like the brute facts that are used in atheistic ethics, but then atheists and philosophers have issues with the brute facts that apologists use in the first place. Like nearly every issue in metaphysics, we end up arguing over unprovable intuitions. Either way, disagreement about the basis for ethics does not mean that atheists don't have objective ethical systems or lack an objective basis for moral values and duties.